It's been a week of turbulence after Silicon Valley Bank's collapse. It's also been a week of announcements with Google and Microsoft continuing to battle for the future of AI, artificial intelligence. And today, John Ford brings us up close with a Silicon Valley founder uh, with deep perspective on all of it. John? Yeah, quite deep. Marissa Meyer, co-founder of Sunshine, an artificial intelligence startup working First, to simplify digital contacts, and you'll remember her as former CEO of Yahoo. Before that, employee number 20 at Google, one of the top executives who engineered that company's growth. I spoke with her yesterday about the lessons from Silicon Valley Bank. She said she's diversified where Sunshine keeps its cash, though it wasn't with SEB. And we talked about the race for AI leadership, which she says you shouldn't count Google out of. Beating Microsoft will probably take disciplined product management, and Meyer says Google has experience with that. I remember when I hired Sundar Pichai, I had him come in and he, I said, you know, I'm not sure exactly what to assign you to, but why don't you take a look over the portfolio of consumer products that, you know, our, my team is working on. And he came back a week later and he's like, you know, there's this thing called Google Toolbar and it has 200 million users and there's no one product managing it. And I was like, good point. <laughs> like, why don't you start working on that? And Google Toolbar then gave rise to Chrome, uh, which then, of course, started merging with the Android uh, operating system. And, and, and Sundar was a brilliant hire and did a great job with all of that. But it gives you an idea that we had like this giant product with millions, hundreds of millions of users that wasn't being actively product managed. Promote that guy, Sundar. Uh, since Meyer left Yahoo six years ago, she's gone back to her roots in artificial intelligence, which was the focus of her graduate work at Stanford before she joined Google. Uh, with Sunshine, the idea is for AI to sift through email and contacts and piece together information that eliminates duplicate entries, corrects misspellings, adds contact information from emails. Sunshine, we founded on the premise and the principle that we want to take the mundane and make it effortless. And we've worked really hard on our contact solution. For us, contacts are the foundation of relationships. The fact that sometimes you go to call someone on your phone and the phone number is not there, even though you emailed them yesterday, right? Even though you're like, wait, I know this colleague and I've spelled their last name wrong because I had to just quick type it into my phone and I didn't know how to spell their last name, so I guessed. Those types of things, we feel like if we can help people clean those up and make contacts, for everyone, their contacts are a mess. You talk to thousands of people now, everyone's contacts are a mess. It's a problem, a big problem hidden here in plain sight. And if we can help clean those things up, then we can go on to build more effective groups, more effective events, more effective sharing among small circles of people. Well, here's some economic sunshine. Even as some people are wringing their hands and talking about Silicon Valley getting downgraded from this banking crisis, I'm seeing a familiar pattern. Experienced executives like Marissa Meyer and another of her former product managers at Google, former Salesforce CEO, Brett Taylor, they're going back to the lab to invent the next big things, this time on top of AI. They're back to being startup founders. I will, I will stipulate that my contacts are a mess. Same. They exist on several platforms. Same. On my cell phone, in my Outlook, in my LinkedIn. Does her product run over top of all of these things to rationalize my contacts? Does she sell the product to me, the, the consumer, or to LinkedIn, the Microsofts, and so forth? To you. And it's right now the primary thing is it's an app on your phone. It reaches into your contacts app and says, oh, you've got six different contacts for this person. Well, uh, are they all the yes. same person? Where are they now? And it'll also link into Gmail and find email addresses that, that email. have phone numbers attached to them and be like, okay, is this a contact? You want to put these together? So things like that, that you don't... That, is the it, older the contact is, I find, the more messed up it is. Oh, yeah, absolutely, right? absolutely. I got, I got old... Uh, numbers for friends who worked at, at a former place we both worked, Time Inc., <laughs> which doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And it's, so it's still there, but, uh, but at any rate. So I have to do some work here. It's not, it's not yeah. going to, I have to. You got to do a little work. I the AI does a little work. Uh, yeah, okay. it's, a, it's a work in progress. Does it give her too much access to personal information between Gmail, our contacts, you know, that sort of thing? Did she address that at all? We didn't talk about the specific ways that it works. It's a very good question. How, are these contacts stored in the cloud anywhere? It appears the way it works is it's rationalizing all of this on the client device as opposed to sucking your contacts. Just in. the That's fact that question. she hired Sundar Pichai. Yeah, she hired a lot. She's uh, sort of like a, a mentor yes. of so many entrepreneurs in the Brett Valley. Taylor? Dropbox, a lot of those folks she's been bringing together since she was at Google. Golden so. touch in that regard for sure. John, thank you. John Ford.